guys, it's Stephanie from My Porch Prints, and today we're going to be crafting this kind of black and antique white uh, journal cover. So let's go ahead and get started. So um, this I've actually already made. Uh, this was from another tutorial that I saw by, let's see, Crafty Pantaloons. It's a grungy style journal cover, and it's made from a coffee stained file folder. So I'll put a link to her tutorial below if you want to make a cover like this and you can watch her video. Um, but then I went ahead after it was all you know cut and dry and ready to go, I took some ink and just lightly stamped it using, let's see, this uh, script stamp that I bought like a million years ago. And I will make a confession, guys. I don't use stamps very often. And this has actually been sitting in my art closet probably for like 10 years. <laughs> And I just pulled it out the other day and used it pretty much uh, for the first time. And it's it's really pretty and cute. And it gave it kind of a, a nice antique, I don't know if you can see that, stamped look. So um, yeah, that's what I did here. And it's a discontinued stamp. Otherwise, I'd give you a link to it, but it's long gone. So um, yeah, so let's see if I can get all my ducks in a row here. So um, what inspired me to make this journal that I'm gonna be making is um, there's a seller on Etsy called My Junk Treasures. And I saw a junk journal that she had done and it had this um, antique, these, these two antique looking um, like suspenders on the front cover. And I was like, those are so cute. So I wrote to her and I said, where did you get those? And she said, well, I actually collect antique corsets and they came from an old corset. <laughs> and I was like, that's really cool, but obviously I'm not gonna be able to replicate that. <laughs> so I decided to just try to um, make one of my own. So I'll put a link to her shop and, and if she still has that available for sale, you can take a look at her journal with, that inspired this idea. But um, so what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna show you how to make um, your own kind of faux antique suspender. And then I'm gonna use that on my journal cover. So um, before I do that though, I'm going to glue some things down on here because I've got it all kind of ready to go and I want to give the glue time to dry while we're looking on how to make these cute little like corset suspenders. So I've cut some pieces out and they're ready to go and I'm using a bunch of um, printables from my shop and I'll go ahead and put links to all these below. I won't talk about all of the different ones that I'm using but I'll, I'll put links below if you want to get some for yourself. So um, to start with, what I did was I cut a couple little pocket shapes out of some like muslin fabric. And again, I'll put links below to everything that I can give you. Uh, I bought the fabric on Amazon, so I'll try to find a link for that. But um, so what I wanna do is I was just kind of doing a little layout for the cover. And what I decided was to put a couple little pockets down here and then maybe put this little um, suspender over here. And then I've got some appliques that I've been chopping up and I'm gonna put probably something like right there. And then, um, oh, I forgot to talk about this. The ribbon that I use in the suspender is actually um, some cloth ribbon that's been hand stamped. And I got that online on an Etsy shop and I forgot to write down the name of where I got it, but I'm going to go ahead and put the link for this in, in the description too. So you can see the shop where I got this from. Okay, we're back. Sorry guys, I had a phone alarm go off and it stopped my video. So I was going to say that I cut a little piece of that um, stamped cloth ribbon and it says bonjour, it's kind of cute. And I went ahead and just glued it to a piece of just cardstock. And I'm going to use that with this uh, like Tim Holtz book plate and I'm going to put that on the cover as well. So just to tell you a little bit of my plans here. And so, I want to get some things kind of glued down and get the glue drying so that I can move on to show you how to make this little suspender that I created. So that's what I'm going to be doing first here. And sorry if I'm a little all over the place. You know, sometimes you plan things out and when it comes time to execute and show people, you, you just get flustered and lost. It reminds me of being in high school speech class. You know, you spend two weeks preparing your speech and then you get up in front of everybody and suddenly you forget everything you were gonna say. <laughs> so that's me. So, let's see if I can get this little pockety guy down here. There we go. 
And I know this when I glue, I, I inked the edges of this just with, you know, distress ink. And when I glue, when the glue touches the ink, it kind of spreads and makes it sort of a little more yellowy, which actually I think is kind of cool and gives it a vintage look. So it's not a big deal to me, but if you're creating these, you might want to know that. Oh, and the other thing I was going to mention, sorry, I'm rambling here, was um, after I cut my little pocket shapes, I went ahead and took a micron pen and drew um, pretend stitching on the pocket shapes. So you can see it's got like that faux stitching around it because this is a no sew journal. So I'm not gonna make you guys do any sewing to create this stuff. And so I thought I would still like to have kind of that stitched look. So um, if you've never used a micron pen, they are really handy, um, especially if you do like Bible journaling or writing on any kind of thin paper because they don't bleed through very badly. And um, they're super, super fine. And you can get them in different sizes. And this one's the 0.45 millimeter and it's just super fine. So it's really good for drawing on things like this. Anyway, we'll plug for my crown there. <laughs> so let's see, I wanna glue a few of these things down here. So um, I'm making this video during the uh, height of the COVID-19 virus epidemic. And I think a lot of us are kind of finding refuge in crafting right now because we're all stuck at home and trying not to get sick or spread the virus around. So that's what I've been doing. And it's kind of nice to have some time to craft. Not that I want a virus to be the reason, but um, at least we can make the best of it, right? <laughs> so let's see. And I was trying to figure out how to attach this. I think I am just going to go ahead and glue it. Just glue it on and hope that that'll hold. I think that it will. As you can tell, I haven't actually made this before. It's just kind of a craft with me thing where we're learning together. So hopefully things will go according to plan. And I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of fold this over the top. And that'll go to the inside of our front cover for our journal. And that'll leave this little guy to kind of dangle down here. I don't know why. I always like my journal to have kind of little dangly or moving parts. Sometimes, you know, it makes it more interesting. But, okay. I'm trying to decide if there's anything else I really need to glue down right now. And I don't think there is. Oh, maybe one more thing. So um, this little dangly guy is from a printable kit in my shop. It's the industrial number tags. And then I just hooked it to a piece of um, pearl hole, like lace ribbon that I bought on Amazon. And I've got a bunch of it. It's really pretty. And I was trying to think of some uses for it. So I'm going to use it on here because I feel like this has kind of a romantic-y style. It's kind of, I call it black and white, but it's really <clears throat> like an antique white, like black and cream. It's almost like a, a buttery white. Hopefully this glue doesn't leak through and close my pocket. Never know what's gonna happen. I wonder if I should stick something in there to keep that from happening. That might not be a bad idea. Okay, get this good guy in here. There we go. Okay. And this is just a little bulb pin, B U L B. I'll try to put links to, I'll try to remember to put links to everything. I use a lot of stuff, so sometimes I'll forget, but I'll, I'll try to do that for you guys. Okay, so we're gonna let this dry just a little bit and you can see it's kind of coming together. It's got some nice layering going on and we're gonna even add more layers, which I really like. And then this will become a cover for a journal. And to get this little um, suspenders, we're going to do kind of a little faux thing. So I cut my um, ribbon to a smaller size. It's like an inch long now instead of, you know, this wide, it's, it's this wide and um, what we're going to do is fold it in half, kind of like this. 
and then the sides, which side we like showing the best. I guess they're both kind of the same. And and I bought these um, suspender hardware pieces online. I can't remember exactly what they're called, but um, I'll go ahead and try to do another link to those as well. And what you do is you put this on here like this and slide it down and then you hook this through. I'll show you how to do this in a minute, but, um, and then this will become your suspender. But before we do that, I wanna give it this kind of cool little lacy look. Uh, the ones that inspired this, uh, let's see, from My Junk Treasures, uh, she had the cutest little ruffles on each side of her suspender. And so I wanted to kind of give it that same sort of feminine look. So I found some just, um, you know, like lace fabric ribbon and or crocheted I don't know exactly what you would call it and then that's how I'm going to get this cute little like ruffle on the edge so I'm gonna cut this off here and then I'm gonna do it again for the other side okay. and what we're gonna do is just open up the ribbon and just kind of uh, glue this down to the inside of it. And sorry, I don't have a whole lot of workspace right here. And then we're gonna glue it down inside so that just a little bit of this ruffle shows on the opposite side. And that's gonna create our little um, corset suspender ruffle. And I don't know if you can hear any of the outside noises happening right now. It's one of the first sunny days we've had in a while and everybody's out mowing and, and playing in their yards and riding motorcycles. So it's a little noisy where I'm at right now. But sorry for that, if that noise is coming through. So there you go. So you just glue it on there. It's really simple. And I know it's not quite as maybe legit as sewing it, but it's nice for people who don't have sewing machines or you know don't really wanna break them out for a small project. To be able to do this so that's why I chose not to have this be a sewing project and actually I kind of messed this up so right here I didn't get these even and that's a bad idea because that's where this is going to land so I'm going to redo this one real quick and do this one. Oh, that's pretty stuck on now. Or do this one <laughs> and make it a little more even down at that end. So. Okay, how are we doing? There we go. So that gives it kind of a cute little ruffly look, like a little feminine addition to your corset suspender. And then, like I said, what you do is you just slide this little guy on here and he goes right there. And then this one, um, and you won't, probably wanna let this dry before you do all this, but then this one's going to go right here. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and just glue these together. I think they're already trying to stick together anyway. But <clears throat> once you slide on this little bottom piece, then you should be able to glue these together because then you won't need them to open up again. And I'm a little congested. Sorry for that. I'm always congested. <clears throat> there we go. Allergy season. And like I said, this piece, you slide it on. Basically, you just go um, under, over, and under. So we go under here, over this middle bar, and then under the top piece. And then we pull it down a little ways, and then straighten it out just a little here, because it's gonna be a little bit big there. 
right, and there you go. And you got a cute little suspender piece that you can use on your cover. Um, the lady that inspired this, she actually had two of them on hers, but she had a really big cover and mine's a lot smaller. So I'm just going to use one on this one and I'll save this for another project. Okay, so hopefully these guys are getting a little bit drier over here and we can start adding some more pieces. So like I said, I glued this little scrap of, um, sorry, I'm all covered in glue, a little scrap piece from my ribbon. It said bonjour, like this one. I cut it off and I stuck it, I glued it to some cardstock and then I'm going to use this over it. So I'm gonna have to cut it so it fits inside here, which is always tricky. But um, what I like to do, and hopefully this will work with the fabric on here, is press it after I've centered it where I want it. And it kind of leaves, I don't know if you can see, but a little vague ring where the piece pressed in. And so that's my cutting guide. I'm going to um, glue this, whoops glue this part down on here where I want it, and then I'm going to attach this over the top. That's the plan anyway, but I don't want to put it too low because I'm actually going to be using some tags and things in my pockets here. So just to get an idea of where I want that. Might be kind of tricky doing it up here, but I'm gonna give it a try. I think I'm gonna need my awl for this to poke holes through here. So I'm gonna go and grab that and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Well, I couldn't find it. So I'm going to have to punch holes a different way. And I think what I'm gonna do is try to mark them with my micron and punch them if I can. I've tried pushing through paper and cardstock with these little tiny, um, I don't know what you call them, brass fasteners that Tim Holtz gives you along with these book plates, but they just bend every time I've tried to use them to poke a hole through. So I've decided that's not a good idea. So I marked my holes. I'm gonna go ahead and try to punch them. My punch may not reach that far. Nope, it sure doesn't. <laughs> oh, figures. Well, all right, plan C. <laughs> I'm going to try to poke a hole with a pen and see if that works. Well, it kind of worked. Got a little hole going on the back here. There we go. Okay, so I just went ahead and poked it with my pen. Let's see if that works for us. Okay, and then what I want to do before I put everything on here is see where this is going to land. There's my holes. There's my bonjour. It's a little sideways, but I think that's going to do. And I think I would like to glue that down. So. I think that looks right. I don't know if there's some easier way to put these on here that other people know about, but this is how I'm going to do it. Okay. And then I'll take my fasteners and I'll fasten them through my little holes here. And you can see that I'm, if you can see that or not them and then hopefully I'll do some kind of inside 
cover on the on the inside front cover to cover up some of this stuff. But for now, there we go, and our our cover's coming together. It's starting to look pretty legit. And um, what I'm going to do is kind of fill up my little pockets here, and I want to ink my edges because they're a little bit boring as is, and inking just adds a little bit of dimension. Okay, and then for my tags, I want to give them kind of a little uh, rivet, I don't know what you call these, to finish them out so that they have a nice little metal hardware piece. So um, I'll put a link to this below too, but this is just um, a little rivet attaching device that I got on Amazon. Well, you think that I would know the names of these things by now, but I don't really have to name them all that often, so I don't think about what they're actually called. And that just puts a nice little finished piece on your, on your tags, if you like that sort of thing. And I think I'll add some ribbon to those too. This is just like a hemp rope, a really thin little hemp string. I like the different textures, kind of the feminine lacy parts with the kind of more rough, you know, hardware and hemp string and stuff. It's kind of a pretty contrast. And these little crossword puzzles and bingo cards are from a new kit that I'm going to be listing in my Etsy shop, a black and white ephemera kit. And then um, these tags are from, let's see, which one is this from? Uh, the Antique Tags and Cards printable. And then this little license plate is from my industrial number, or uh, no, it's not, sorry, it's from my found objects printable. And I don't know where I want to put him. Back here, maybe. We'll kind of show these off a little bit. There. It's kind of fun. And then this is kind of cute. The lady that I bought the um, stamped, hand-stamped fabric ribbon from gave me a cute little card, and her handwriting is just so pretty. So I'm going to stick this in here, too, because it's kind of special and cute. And I always like when Etsy sellers include little cute extras like that. So, okay, I think we are getting pretty close to done. I wouldn't mind adding this little guy down here. I think it'll help tie in the applique at the top. So I'm going to do that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think that turned into a really cute journal cover and then I'll um, fill it up and finish it off later but there we go so thanks for crafting with me guys we'll talk to you later bye